Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to discuss with all of you how to stay safe while foraging your wild edibles. Now foraging can be a very safe activity. It can also be a very dangerous activity if you don't follow some very important procedures and you go about it with the wrong mindset. So in this video, we're going to discuss how to keep yourself safe. So without further ado, let's get right into it. One of the most important things about foraging is knowing the plant that you want to consume. You want to be 100% sure in your identification process and that you have the correct plant. Now this goes not only for identifying them, but what parts you want to use and how you want to use them. You want to make sure that you are confident in your identification skills to where you recognize a plant in the wild the same as you would an apple in the store. For example, if I were to set an apple, a pop-tart, and a paper plate in front of you, you're going to know exactly what they are, and that's because of the familiarity that you have with those items. You want to be just as familiar with wild plants that you want to collect and harvest for use. Sure, there are what's called look-alikes, but very rarely do they look exactly alike. Sometimes the differences are so far apart that once you understand the nuances between the two plants, you're going to see how different they really do look. Another thing to look out for is when our minds will convince us that we have something that we do not actually have. This is very common and leads to more poisonings and improper ingestion than what I would assume false information does. The mind is easy to trick and there's many people who convince themselves they did not under any circumstances gather the wrong plant. This is very dangerous thinking to be involved in and could very easily lead to extreme poisoning or worse. So by all means, until you are 100% sure on the identification, do not consume something from the wild. There are plenty of great guides for proper identification and I make videos showing how to identify several wild plants. There are a lot of other good channels here on YouTube for you guys to check out as well because you want more resources available to you so that way you can ensure and double check your identification. Another thing that's really important is knowing the plant you want to consume and how it should be consumed. You need to know how the plant has to be used before you actually go out and forage it. When it comes to using wild plants, there are many things to know before you actually consume them. Obviously, you want to know what parts to harvest and how to prepare them, but you also need to know what season to harvest certain parts of a plant or if they have any specific process to be used safely. A good example would be Jack in the Pulpit. Its roots need to be dried and roasted before consuming. The rest of the plant will cause severe burning in the esophagus and throat if it is consumed. Another example is the Mayapple. The pulp of the fully ripe fruit is edible, but one must be cautious to avoid using the seeds and skin because they are toxic. The rest of the plant can be deadly poisonous, so this just goes to emphasize and stress knowing how to use wild plants before actually consuming them. There are a lot of myths with foraging wild edibles and medicinal plants, and I've actually done a couple of videos on those subjects. If you're interested, feel free to check those out. But common held myths can be extremely dangerous and they can oftentimes be deadly. Oftentimes these myths are very small mistakes, like when people think wood sorrel is a clover. They'll think so and then they'll keep on telling people that it's a clover, which then makes it kind of like a myth. Other times these can be dangerous beliefs or myths that a plant can be consumed in small quantities to relieve an allergy. Like the oh-so-prevalent myth that eating small leaves of poison ivy can prevent allergic reactions. This is not true, and there is plenty of medical evidence to back this up. The main component of poison ivy that causes a reaction is urethiol. It is far more damaging to the sensitive linings of the throat and stomach than it is to the skin, and people have died, unfortunately, just from believing this dangerous myth. There are also myths like wild medicine is safe so it can't cause any problems or wild food will heal all of our health problems and much more. These lead to a false sense of hope and security that could be prevented by just simply double checking the information. If you've been misled by wrong information, try to correct that person in a respectful manner as well as any time you hear another person saying the same thing. 
Also, understand they most likely did not give you false information to intentionally cause you harm. It was probably just an honest mistake, and condemnation will only hurt everyone involved. When you're foraging and collecting your wild plants for food or medicine, you want to avoid cross-contamination between plants and mushrooms. When you're trying to identify an unknown plant in the field, it's very easy to make mistakes. You know, with all the heat, the bugs, flipping through guide after guide, trying to identify a wild plant. This is why I recommend one or two separate collection bags. It's much easier to keep medicinal plants away from edible plants with several different collection bags. Sometimes it can be important to keep away your bitter medicinals or plants that are going to be leaking juices and sap on to your delicious wild edibles and potentially ruining their flavor. It would be unfortunate to put poison ivy, for example, in the collection bag with your echinacea root. Avoiding cross-contamination is key to responsible foraging. And lastly, it's important to use caution the very first time you consume a plant so that way you don't have a dangerous allergic reaction or you don't have an inadvertent reaction from maybe a medication that you are also probably taking. So make sure you keep that in mind as well. Oftentimes people think that just because it's a plant that it is safe. This is not true. Many of our most potent poisons come from plants. It is also possible to have an allergic reaction to a wild plant. Unfortunately, since it's oftentimes impossible to test the safety of this with an allergen specialist, we are left to do the testing ourselves. This is dangerous, of course, and it's something that I do not recommend. However, the odds are that if you consume a very small amount of a plant your very first time, you won't have a deadly reaction, even if you are allergic. And by small amount, I mean literally a small nibble or two. That isn't enough to enjoy it. However, if you have no negative reactions, then you can slowly increase the amount that you're nibbling a little bit. Chances are that you won't have a reaction to the majority of plants that you try to consume, but in case you do, you can and should have a piece of the plant left to take the hospital if it should come to that. I'm not trying to scare anybody with this. I'm just trying to say that you're better off playing it safe than being sorry later down the road. I thank all of you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.